This is the story of how true love can go awry and the first step to mending it and making it stronger than ever. We have to get away from what you argue about and look at how you disagree. Most people get into a rigid pattern that takes them over. We call that the cycle because it goes around and around. We'll look at how the cycle gets between you and your partner and makes you think your partner doesn't care. We come together to fight the true enemy, which is the cycle. This starts the journey to a secure and lasting bond. Meet Wallace and Pat. This is their story. It might be a little like yours. Maybe you're more like Wallace or more like Pat or a mix of the two. Wallace and Pat meet and fall in love. They hope to be understood, be first in each other's hearts, comfort each other in sad times, have good times together, and most of all, they plan to live happily ever after. They make a home and build their life together, adding one thing after another, and the stress starts to pile up. They each notice the other seems far away, and they can't seem to talk without arguing. They each feel misunderstood, frustrated, lonely, and wonder if they really matter to the other one. Pat tries to get Wallace's attention, but Wallace withdraws trying not to argue. Pat tries harder, speaks louder, tells Wallace just what to do differently, and Wallace freezes trying not to do the wrong thing. Pat pursues explaining again, and Wallace is getting frustrated and angry. Finally, Wallace disappears inside or to other things. Pat is left wondering what happened, and away they go into the whirlwind of fighting and distance. These moves go by so fast, it's really hard to tell what's going on. To help us understand, let's look at two bits of love science. Number one is the emotional center of the brain. It's a very old part of the nervous system and treats the potential loss of your happy home life as a code red emergency. It gets your body ready for fight or flight and shuts down unnecessary functions like rational thought. The second comes from Newton's third law of motion. You know, the one about for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So back to Wallace and Pat. It makes sense that they think the problem is the other person, but this is called find the bad guy, and it's a lose-lose proposition. Either you are the bad guy, or you are with a bad guy, and who wants that? Yet both Wallace and Pat make sense in their own ways. Let's look at them one at a time. First, Pat. When Pat feels far away from Wallace or they're fighting, Pat fears being alone, unimportant, invisible, helpless. And because of that, Pat feels sad or lonely, frustrated, irritated, angry. All this creates the fight-or-flight response. Pat wants Wallace to come closer, but what Pat says sounds like demands or criticisms. So Wallace sees Pat saying, You're always gone. You never listen to me. I have to do everything by myself. I can't get through to you. You just don't care. But Pat has longings and softer feelings under this protest. Like, I miss you. I want to know I matter to you. I want to be a full partner. I can't find you. I want to be loved by you. Saying these kinds of things is hard because Pat doesn't know whether Wallace will respond lovingly. And Pat may be right about that. So let's look at Wallace. When Wallace feels far away from Pat or they're fighting, Wallace fears being inadequate, misunderstood, helpless. And because of that, Wallace feels sad or numb, frustrated, irritated, angry. Again, a fight-or-flight response. So, of course, Wallace wants the conflict to end, but what Wallace does seems like abandonment to Pat. This is what Pat sees. Wallace may freeze, saying nothing, or make empty promises like I'll try to do better, or disappear. Wallace may build a wall and go behind it. Wallace might get defensive, I didn't mean it that way. What do you want from me? I can never get it right for you. Wallace has longings and softer feelings 
under the protest too. When Wallace freezes, it means, I don't know what to say. I want to do the right thing for you. I don't want to fight, it'll only make things worse. I am overwhelmed and need to feel safe. Wallace's defensiveness really means, please accept me. I want to know you love me. I don't know what to do. I feel sad and lonely. It's also hard for Wallace to say all these kinds of things and for the same reason, and Wallace may be right about that. Okay, so now we can put the two of them together. It's an endless loop, sometimes called a pattern or dance or cycle. You can start with Pat. Pat feels Wallace is far away and reacts with alarm because Wallace is so important and protests trying to get Wallace closer. Wallace feels criticized because Pat is so important, also reacts with alarm and protests by withdrawing further. Pat sees the withdrawing and reacts more and pursues even harder. Notice the longings and softer emotions never get seen. It's the same if you start with Wallace. Wallace feels bad, reacts because Pat is important, and protests to stop the conflict by withdrawing. Pat sees that and reacts to Wallace's distance and on and on. Either way, the longings and softer emotions never get seen. Looking at the cycle this way, you can see how one affects the other, and the whole thing happens because they are so important to each other. The alarm gets so high that the cycle goes out of control. Here's where the science comes in. The red alert emergency in the brain makes the cycle fast and the reactions make it strong. When we look at the steps one by one in a safe environment like therapy, the emotional brain calms down, fight or flight hormones ebb, and the thinking brain can come back online. This slows the action of the cycle and they can start to separate from it. Now there's a possibility for new responses and reactions. They learn to recognize the cycle as the enemy, that endless loop of action and reaction that keeps them in misery. Coming together against the cycle means blaming the cycle and not each other, and that makes it smaller and slower and helps them feel calmer and more open to each other. Now Wallace and Pat can see and touch the longings and softer emotions they each have. They start to see each other in new ways and they can understand and calm reactive emotions like anger. This is not the end of the story. Taming the cycle is a big milestone toward a lasting secure connection. Wallace and Pat will form new, deeper and more secure bonds that will help them stay with their vulnerable feelings. A new positive pattern can develop. When they see each other's vulnerable emotions, they can understand and reach for each other for comfort and celebration, and all that is made possible by first taming the cycle. Do you see yourself or your partner in Pat or Wallace or in the shape of the patterns? Real people are more complicated than these two-dimensional black and white figures in our story. One or both may be a mix of pursuing Pat and withdrawing Wallace. You probably say and feel different things and have your own hot button issues. Your cycle may be harsher or gentler. If Pat loses hope, Pat may withdraw and just stop trying. Or Wallace might choose to fight fire with fire and say really mean things meant to deter criticism and cover hurt. However, there's always some pattern that comes up when your relationship is under stress. Those are the times it's good to have something or someone to blame beside your partner. When you come for therapy, you won't have to know anything about your cycle in advance. We'll discover it together. Taming the cycle is a good start that allows you to take even more risks in relationships. To stay with vulnerable emotions when you want to fight or flee. 
and learn to be available, responsive, and engaged with each other. I'll help you take those risks safely and to reach to each other for the comfort and support that will sustain your love for a lifetime.